Hello everybody, welcome to Snyder's Inc. And today we have got a Doxia Mysteries, and this is the disturbing part of YouTube, Volume 5, and we're going to get right into it. Ladies and gentlemen, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, comment your think down below, let's go. Lösch mich egal wie oft du bist, ich, deine Mutter, vor dir, okay? Ich habe sie geschlagen und ich bin Gott dankbar, dass ich sie nicht getötet habe, versteht ihr mich? Egal mit wem du auf korrekte redest, ich rede nur zu dir, alles was ich will und ich werde es jetzt tun. This one has been a huge topic on the German side of YouTube and is easily the biggest downfall I've witnessed. Mois was one of the biggest YouTubers in Germany, amassing over 2 million followers on YouTube, over 3 million on TikTok, and over 1 million on Instagram. But all of those accounts have been banned due to his actions. His downfall is still continuing, and it's uncertain whether he will harm himself or others. He is currently fleeing countries, he is homeless, takes every possible drug he can find, is running away from police and other gang members, which he keeps insulting in his videos and Instagram stories. He's basically being pursued by everybody. Some want to kill him, or the police want to arrest him. He had a pre- This guy, this sounds insane already. This, so this guy is calling out gang members. He's calling out, um, and he's, he's on the wanted by the police. He's taking every drug he can find. He's homeless. He's clearly a danger to, to human beings. What the fuck? A long career and a lot of controversies. So it would take too long to discuss every single one of them. Instead, we'll focus on the most important and recent controversies. I'll be adding subtitles and translating everything since most of it is in German. Just for context, Moist was actually a hyper successful YouTuber with insane growth, loved by the majority of people and doing a lot of charitable things in his videos, similar to Mr. Beast. So it's extremely surprising how strong the contrast is to his actual self. The first few cracks in the career of Moist start around the end of 2020 and beginning of 2021. Moist made a video about a rapper named Usher, exposing him for lying about his identity, faking his passport, lying about his age and name as well as religion. The most damning part, and there was a great emphasis on this, was that Asche isn't actually Chechen, but rather Polish. Nach 12 Jahren Karriere sagt er zum Beispiel hier, halb Tschetschener, halb Ukrainer, wir haben Zeit miterlebt, deshalb nennt mich meine Mama Amir Israel. Und das ist das erste Mal, wo ich gedacht habe, Bro, aber der hat mir erzählt, Digga, sein Vater ist Tschetschener, seine Mutter ist Tschetschenerin, Digga. Sechs Jahre lang war er in Tschetschenien, wie in diesem Interview er erzählt. Also bis 89 bist du in Tschetschenien in Grozny geworden. Yeah. Dann seid ihr mit... Ja, warst du ungefähr sechs Jahre alt, ja. fünf Jahre, äh, sechs Jahre später, 95, bist du dann nach Deutschland gekommen. Ja. This video was completely meant to destroy not only the rapper's career, but also his life. Since he was regularly engaging and interacting with Chechens, while he allegedly wasn't even a Chechen himself. And just for additional context, Mois himself is a Chechen. That's why he's putting a lot of emphasis on this. There aren't many Chechens in the world, so normally they take great pride in working and living together. Asha would make numerous songs talking about the struggles and wars of the Chechens, so his identity and career was basically tied to his alleged nationality. In the end, this video actually backfired quite heavily, since the rapper decided to make a diss track against Moise, which was received quite well. While the rapper was actually lying about a few things, and Moise was actually correct in some points, it didn't really damage his career all that much. But for the Oh, wait, but you told me the Chetsons is like, yeah, he's actually straight alive. He's actually from Poland, he's straight alive. And they were just like, yeah, but he made a good diss track. So actually, you know what? We're just going to take it. We're just going to take it. Actually, Moist is the whole in the first place. Because he, he's the one that's the diss track about. So we actually fuck him. But that's insane. So Moist did a video exposing this, uh, this rapper that's Chetsonin for lying about everything and no one cared 
I did do just like, yeah, but he made a good diss track about you, so fuck you, I guess. YouTuber Morris, this was only the start. On April 2023, one of his best friends named Maestro made a YouTube video, completely exposing Morris, claiming that he had been taken advantage of, not being paid for his work while he was working for Morris, claiming that Morris was consuming a lot of drugs, having psychotic episodes, and just overall lying a lot, insulting him and being untrustworthy. He had said he's a new prophet. He had said he's God. This wasn't an unprompted video, since Mois decided to make a song, dissing Maestro for no real reason. After this, however, things started going downhill rather quickly. Mois gifted his YouTube channel with over 2 million subs to Maestro, even though Maestro never asked for it, and he also never accepted this gift. However, this led the channel to become very inactive, with the YouTuber Mois trying to grow other channels, but being pretty unsuccessful at doing so. His TikTok and Instagram were still going strong, so people assumed that he just diverted his attention to his other channels. This controversy eventually died down quite a bit, but Moise's reputation took a big hit. There was also another controversy of him receiving 100,000 euros in donations for the earthquake victims of Turkey, but he actually ended up not donating the money, but I won't be going into details here. Instead, we now get to the most recent controversy, him putting his wife through seven years of abuse, beating her on numerous occasions, and in one instance almost killing her. This is very extensive and elaborate, so this won't be as detailed as it should be. It started off with rumors circulating that the wife of Moise has been cheating on him with a different rap artist named San Diego, who also had a wife himself. I know, a lot of rappers are involved, but that's due to Moise constantly involving rappers in his content. Moise claims that San Diego was his best friend at the time, so it basically crushed him even more to learn that he allegedly had an affair with his wife. So far, there hasn't been concrete proof of this actually being true, with the only real proof provided being a video recorded of San Diego's ex-wife filming the wife of Moise with the rapper. <laughs> Moise was going on a ramp. Oh! Oh! Oh, that's suspicious! Oh, I'd be suspicious of that! Um, that's all I need to see! I understand! Because if I'm with. If the rapper comes over to me and just takes the camera because he doesn't want to be seen, I'm suspicious! Page on social media, making over 300 Instagram stories per day. Mostly just reposting his fans, but also others that were insulting his wife for allegedly cheating on him. Moise himself also made videos against her, further ruining her reputation and pretending to be the actual victim. Eventually though, it reached a point where his ex-wife made a very long statement, detailing that she had been in an abusive relationship for 7 years. It's a lot that she talks about, so I won't go through every single point, but there are some key aspects. She was getting abused by the mother of Moise, who was living in the same household. According to her, she was being held captive in the house. She wasn't allowed to call her own parents for three full years. She was regularly getting beaten up by Moise, and in one instance, she almost got killed by him. She attached some pictures as proof and sounded very trustworthy, but critically analyzing these, there was no context behind the images. So it wasn't 100% proven whether these claims were true or not. However, these claims were quickly confirmed by Moise himself saying that she can be glad that he didn't end up killing her having his usual outrage. What? Ich habe sie geschlagen und ich bin Gott dankbar, dass ich sie nicht Moist, you actually had a chance here. His, this is why his brain didn't work. Cuz even like, cuz he just admits this, right? So he ruins his own reputation. Clearly reputation is not his main thing cuz if that's the case, bro, there's no evidence on you. There's no evidence on you. You little shoot she shows you, but there's no context. You don't know what's going on. No one would fully buy her store. Actually, no, that's a lie in this day and age. In this day and age, you could literally have a cut, the Liz cut, and be like, yeah, I've been abused by this man for 12 years. Just show the photo of the cut. They're like, yep, that's guilty, guilty. Prove fact. Prove completely in fact. This guy's the worst human being that's ever lived. They they don't actually need evidence. Uh, you ain't even heads. You don't even need evidence anymore. I don't know how we've reached the point where evidence is something you don't need to prove things to the public, but apparently that become a thing. So I, I, I don't get it anymore. I just don't get it. Getötet hab, versteht ihr mich? Aber ich hab's nicht getan! Because we went from, and I've always said this before, we went from guilty till proven innocent to... No, we... 
Innocent until proven guilty to guilty until proven innocent. Weil ich mich kontrolliere. But even then, innocence not even, even when you're proven innocent to some people for some fucking reason, you're still guilty. I don't get it. Aber es ist schwer, sich zu kontrollieren. Verstehst du? Darum laufe ich vor mir selber weg. Versteht ihr das? Und die hat meine Kinder weggenommen. Mit einem dreckigen... Und die haben mir meine Kinder 13 Monate nicht gezeigt. Und mein Essen gegessen. Verstehst du das? Ich habe meine Miete nicht bezahlt, damit sie das haben kann. Jetzt sitzt dieser da und erzählt, ich hätte bloß Auge. Freut dich, dass du nicht tot bist. Kappa! During this entire ordeal, he was constantly insulting her on social media, even leaking what looked like revenge corn, claiming that he even has a sex tape with her, which she plans on leaking. At this point, the rapper Sandiga also made a statement, saying that he was misled by Moise, and cut off his friends and colleagues because of him, and that he never had an affair with Moise's wife, which led to the following video from Moise. <laughs> Ich suche dich schon sehr lange. Ich will mit dir einen Podcast drehen. Drehen wir einen Podcast? Du wiegst wie mein linkes Ei, Bro. Ich habe mit meinem Loch gezogen. Red nicht so viel, Bro. Zeig mich nicht an in jeder Stadt wie ein Ich dich, ich Salah, ich Salas Vater mit diesem Sch, denn ich bewegle alles, was ich will. Und ich werde es jetzt tun. Und du kleine Du nicht so vor kleinen Kindern im Internet auf Klass für dieses eine Mal meine Frau anschauen, du Son. Egal wie du dich vermarktest, du J Ich jeden deine J Egal welcher Abstammung sie sind und mach aus ihnen Jüdinnen! Hadidin! Egal wo du bist, ich finde dich Son. Egal was du postest, lösch mich egal wie oft du willst. Ich deine Mutter vor dir. Okay? Okay, he's actually crazy. Like he's, he needs help. Like this guy needs help. This is even this is mental health, but this guy is dangerous. This guy's fucking dangerous. To himself and other people, he's dangerous. This guy needs fucking help, bro. Get son, und dafür gebe ich meine Seele auf. Ich bin Shaitans Vater. Hadet an, ich jage dich, egal wo du bist, egal mit wem du auf korrekte redest. Ich rede nur zu dir. Wolltest du fühlen, wie es sich anfühlt, Digga? sich anfühlt, hadet an, wenn ich Anis nicht hunderttausend Mal an solche opfern würde, um deine Musik wegzunehmen. For context, San Diego is a Jew, and Moist kept on insulting him because of it, which, if you're familiar with Germany, is being punished quite heavily, and so he had to flee the country, because multiple people report him to the police, and they were obviously looking for him in order to arrest him. Currently, it's unclear where he is. He's basically in a new country every few days. Some speculating that he might be in Mexico right now or in Italy. He's homeless, doesn't have any wealth, since he lost all of his money that he made from his YouTube career, which should have easily been in the multi-millions. He's having a psychotic episode and is fueling it by consuming every drug he can find. Yeah. He even asked for donations to buy even more, and people keep on donating. His IG. Wait a minute, hold on. So he does a donate. He's like, hey, I need you all to donate. I need a bunch of stuff to buy. A I need money to buy a bunch of drugs. So I can get more fucked up and get more crazy. People are like, donate, sweet, like. Oh, but because there are people, I guarantee you, there are people who watch him and enjoy his suffering. There have to be people who watch and enjoy his suffering. It's like uh, Only Use Me Blade, who people donate to watch him get drunk and fuck his life up. Those people do that because they're just so fucked. They don't. Don't do that, just don't. These stories and overall content is also now in English. I'm normally a father of children and sh this. I was never like this, you know, I never li lived like this. You know, I had normal home, stable income, man. It's difficult to understand him at times, but I guess his strategy here is to shift towards a more international audience with the hopes of having a career again. I've only talked about maybe 5% of the information available, and this is such a crazy case, it's almost unbelievable. Someone who had such a good reputation, and was liked by so many for so many years. Is there someone who did a full on breakdown of this? Because I want to know all of it. Like, I want to know all of this. I want to know the entire scope of what this guy's fucking craziness.
Beast-Wars, constantly showing off in his videos as this Mr. Beast type figure who was donating so many things to others and going from that to this complete maniac with a really toxic private life, betraying everybody, getting hooked on drugs, ruining his entire life, almost killing his wife, threatening to even kill his own children and ending up homeless was shocking to everybody. Guys, don't forget to subscribe. If you're enjoying the video so far, it really helps out. You can always change your mind later. YouTube has been used in numerous cases for very nefarious reasons, often in ways that are difficult to track. The Elsa Gate or Monkey 8 rabbit holes are just some examples that have received widespread attention. While I was doing research on a completely different topic, I found something seemingly very alarming. There are two playlists called Baby Torture. Upon closer inspection, the playlists were created by the same YouTube channel, someone who goes by John Doe. They have a third playlist called Baby Punished. Let's have a look at the first playlist. After glancing over the titles of some of the videos, we can see that the videos were uploaded by different channels, sometimes dating back to over a decade ago. While some of the titles reaffirm what this playlist should entail, if we actually check out some of these videos, there's nothing strange about it. Audrey. Though there are also videos covering what seems like parents taking the lives of their own child or doctors being responsible for the disability of babies, etc. But those are only news outlets covering very dark subject matters, but nothing graphic or homemade. In the second playlist, it's much of the same, though most of these videos here are homemade. We see babies crying, sometimes for no reason, sometimes because they are hungry. Okay, this is definitely a video not getting monetized. I can already tell that, so... Any donation helps via PayPal, super thanks, but I would... This video's fucked, and I can already tell just by this topic alone. We definitely are not getting monetized for this video. Taking a look at the channel itself, we cannot find any uploads, but a staggering amount of playlists, all involving babies. It's unclear why they would dedicate such a large amount of time creating so many different playlists all involving babies. There are easily hundreds of playlists, some involving over a hundred videos. Some have pretty inappropriate titles like we discussed earlier, but there are more, like this one called Naughty Babies or Babies Abused, including videos showing what seems like real abuse of someone holding their naked baby upside down in the air. In the grand scheme, however, the majority of playlists seem to be harmless, but the intention behind creating so many of these playlists is unknown. Also, there is a huge amount of views that have been generated by their playlists regarding baby torture. So there seems to be an interest in seeking and checking out this type of content. As for my opinion on this, I think while it is pretty strange and someone here seems overly obsessed with babies, it seems like a user that is using YouTube as a form of library, cataloging things they find interesting through the playlist function. They didn't expect their playlist to gain any traction, so they weren't careful with titling their playlist appropriately. Other sick individuals were seeking out this type of content, hence why there are a lot of views on these playlists. We cannot fully exclude whether the person running the channel is malicious or not. However, they themselves haven't uploaded any videos. Also one last thing that I want to mention is that some of these playlists have hidden videos, meaning that those videos are no longer online or have been deleted by YouTube. This could be due to different reasons, including that it might have shown footage that was too graphic. Yeah, that's fucked. That's, that whole thing's fucked. That, that's just, this, that's completely fucked. I have no other way to describe it except that's fucked. I don't know what this guy's intention was, but uh, he gave the wrong crowd something that he shouldn't have. On the separate internet mysteries, a now deleted user made a post about a channel named Garzuela which they suspect is tied to human trafficking. They claim they found this channel by accident. There are in fact two channels posting very similar content, presumably from the same owner, which goes by Creston Theater. On the channel itself, we can see that it has been abandoned for over a decade now, with the most recent videos dating back to over 10 years ago. The titles include characters in Arabic. The videos seem largely uninteresting at first, just featuring someone filming the people and street. The titles seem to include the date of recording. 
This seems to follow the structure of the Islamic calendar, hence why it says 1432-22. Converted to our date, it will be some time in 2011. If we take a look at the most viewed videos on this channel, things start to get significantly more disturbing. And these videos always feature a girl, and you can hear her talking to what appears to be her dad. That was from that one day. This is like green, green and turquoise day. Some videos have the comments disabled, which may have not been the choice of the uploader, but rather YouTube stepping in and closing the comment sections. On other videos, the comments are available, and as you'd expect, it's filled with predators. Comments like, I can sleep with you, or, hello my love, you're very pretty. Both comments coming from the same user. Multiple others also added that they find her beautiful. Here's one asking for her Instagram. One more here, from someone asking, anything better through email. Basically asking for CP. One of the most concerning ones is a comment thread, reading, to enjoy all night. How? In the bed. Really? Yes. You know it's naughty. Yes, it's real. What follows is a bunch of comments from the same user, asking for the telegram of someone else, and seemingly being successful in exchanging information, but the messages of the other users are all deleted. Returning back to the videos, the living conditions displayed in these videos don't seem to be the best, with videos featuring rubbish on the floor and a lack of furniture in the rooms. In the same video, we can see what appears to be her dad. The interactions with his daughter all seem friendly. The Redditor claims that this could be someone who trafficked this child, but I haven't really seen any form of evidence or arguments that would suggest that. Every interaction that I've seen on those videos was very friendly. He never had a conflict with his daughter, and his daughter also never seemed to feel uncomfortable. Though, there's a bit more to the story. Hi, my name is Kurt. Because that seemed very, very... Like, that seemed very normal, but... I play a father on YouTube.com. Um, I've been raising a child uh, as a character on YouTube, but in real life I'm also raising a child. And, but we could use your funds. I haven't opened up a PayPal account. Or, maybe we could just use your prayers. And, um, I'm, I'm kind of in the show right here. Anyway, um... This was pretty difficult to understand. It almost feels like he's ashamed of even doing this video. But from what I was able to gather is that his name is Kurt and he's asking for donations through his PayPal. He seems to struggle with raising his child and from the living conditions that we looked into previously, it makes sense that he seems to be out of money. In other videos, we can hear that the man is a Muslim. Tomorrow I only got one more day to upload videos this week. I think I can get them all in one day if I get there early enough. Inshallah. That means a lot willing. This brings us to his blog, which contains very detailed information about his mental state and life. The following will discuss information that he himself publicly shared on his public website. We learn that the child's name is Star. Kurt converted to Islam, but is from a Mormon family, which caused tensions between them. We can see videos of Kurt praying. There are also numerous videos on the Creston Theatre channel, where his daughter is also wearing the hijab. Hi guys, I put a different hijab. Okay. I won't be going through all of the blog posts here, because it's simply too much, and feels like he's ranting at times, repeating the same things over and over again, but in his very last post from October 2017, he says the following. Okay, so the battle between extended family kidnappers, my mom, and stepdad, or stepdad, but I wish he was dead and then the ex-wife kidnapper family of 10 plus 12 more cousins, many of whom were robbed from other divorced spouses. And I'm just still sitting here, waiting in Peru four and a half years later of not seeing my daughter, since I don't have a kidnapper team like them. So he seems to have lost custody over his daughter. Overall, he seems to be in a constant conflict with the family of his ex-wife and his own family. 
He doesn't seem to have access to his daughter any longer. Kurt also frequently says that he wants to have control of the daughter, which seems very important to him. Also claiming in other posts that his ex-wife is schizophrenic and is insulting her numerous times, claiming that she wants to take control over him and his daughter. It's honestly difficult to tell what's going on at times. If he's always telling the truth in his posts, it feels like his ex-wife and family are trying to trick him into doing something which will cause him to lose custody of the child. At the same time, there are so many unhinged rants in here and he also frequently talks about conspiracy stuff in his YouTube videos, so it might be him having a mental breakdown in these rants. One of them reading, If I see any of your brothers and sisters before I see Star, I will kill them. I'm going to visit that neighborhood more often. It's very close to me. You've done this to me long enough. I chose to go. It was my choice. No one stops saying that. I will kill them. Even after I get Star back, if I see them, I will kill them. There's no justice otherwise. There's too much information, so it's impossible. This guy's unhinged. This guy's just plainly unhinged. Uh, this guy's... He might have actually lost custody of his daughter. That's possible. And if he lost custody of his daughter, maybe he went through a... Um, maybe that's helped him go through this mental breakdown. Like, he already was having mental issues. And losing his daughter sent him over the edge. Made him go completely unhinged. Do you know what I mean? I think that's what could have been happening here. And he's just lost it now. ...for me to cover it all. But there are even Tumblr posts, which are allegedly from him. And he also threatens people there with their lies. It goes even further. With him having an IG account, where his mental state seems to deteriorate even further. His rants and descriptions being more unhinged than his videos. No one's ever said that when my daughter was 10 or 11 or 12 years old and they entice her with an iPhone to give up her father for an iPhone. Just don't, don't think about him, don't talk about him. Here's your iPhone. That was okay. She didn't have any parental control. She had unlimited access to the internet. She could do anything she wanted. She made YouTube videos. She did anything. Now she's 16 and they're tightening the grip. She's like barely exists on the internet. She takes... Her mother's like controlling her Instagram. She doesn't even, she isn't even really online. That's just her mother changing the pictures on her Instagram like a psychotic witch. His newest post on IG was from December 2021. However, Kurt is actually active to this date on new accounts. There's a YouTube channel named Star Gunnerman and a TikTok page named Oman Trade School. He seems even more unhinged than before. Most of his content consisting of rants, conspiracy stuff and violence, mostly expressed through writings rather than videos with him seemingly losing custody of his daughter and him not being in contact with his previous family and ex-wife. I think there's basically nothing more to it. He could be a danger to himself, but so far, nothing seemed to have happened. That's this, that guy, that poor, because I usually poor guy, because see, this guy's going through a mental breakdown and was going through some shit mentally while also losing custody of his daughter. So like, he's, he's gone off, this guy, guy is going through some shit. Before we start with this topic, I just want to say that this was pretty difficult to research because this topic has only been covered on Chinese social media platforms and outlets, so I don't really understand anything. This guy was actually quite a big deal in Taiwan, hence I'm surprised that this hasn't been picked up on by some English-speaking YouTubers. I've tried working with Google Translate as best as possible, but I might miss a few details and infos here and there, so just keep that in mind. And Chia Hang Zheng, better known as God Tone Online, is a Taiwanese YouTuber and an eSportler for the video game League of Legends. He was one of the most successful streamers in Taiwan, amassing 10,000 viewers per stream. He had a very long career, starting from 2013. While God Tone had a few controversial situations, he wasn't necessarily at fault. There was a time in 2016 where he was asked to promote a mobile game, but the developer ended up not paying him the money they agreed on. The developer claimed that God Tone had a negative public image, which wasn't good for the reputation of the game. In the end, God Tone received the money after he sued the developer. There was one more case in 2019, but it's so difficult to understand through Google Translate what even happened that I won't comment on this any further. What I can say, that he again wasn't at fault here from the looks of it. Now we get to the part where he was actually at fault, and the things happening here were pretty rough. In 2013, God Tone insulted a police officer and a moderator of the video game League of Legends in a forum called PTT, which seems to be one of the biggest forums in Taiwan. In 2014, he was charged with slander and served a two-year suspended sentence. In April 2024, things got pretty bad. There was a scandal with a Taiwanese comedian named Mikkei Huang. While he was accused of harassing women, police found CP on his devices. God Tone talked about the scandal and said that the scandal wasn't anything serious and that he'd like to have intercourse with minors as well. Following this insane comment... 
Oh god. Oh god. Oh, get, get, come. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. Uh, this. Sorry, that went off the rails there. Um. <coughs> My bad. Sorry. Um. This guy's just. This, this guy's an idiot. He's one of the weird people that get led into the fucking esports world. This is the second time we've heard of a weird guy in the esports because they did the. Uh, remember the. Remember the guy, I think it was either the last time he did this, the last, one of the last things he did with this guy, um, was he sport guy and then suddenly got fucking angry and, because he hated losing and barely talked to anyone, he ended up shooting someone and, yeah, so they, uh, esports like to let some weirdos in. He lost all of his collaborations and his YouTube channel got banned. He was also interviewed by media outlets, this time apologizing, admitting that it was a mistake. 我想一直會成年,那這個東西我剛剛有講到其實被斷章取義,可是如果大家覺得這一段話就是大家不舒服,對各位不管是家長還是誰,反正誰想感到不舒服的話我都道歉好不好,對這樣子對不起對不起對不
Well, someone's obsessed and feels like if I can't have them, no one can get them help. Because it, it can end badly in this case. Music community, enter a fan base, leading to an outpouring of grief and tributes worldwide. The tragedy of Grimmy's death sparked conversations about the safety of performers and the need for improved security measures at live events. In the wake of her passing, her family established the Christina Grimmy Foundation, which aims to support families affected by the tragedy of gun violence and breast cancer, honoring Grimmy's mother, who battled the disease. Christina Grimmy's legacy extends far beyond her music. She is remembered as a vibrant, kind-hearted individual who believed in the power of music to connect and heal. Her covers and original songs continue to resonate with listeners, serving as a testament to her talent and spirit. The hashtag CG Forever is often used by fans and peers to honor her memory and celebrate her contributions to music. That's about it. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you thought of these in the comment section below. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all for the next one.